I'm excited to give you a tour of my MacBook Air M1 as a software engineer. Whether you're a seasoned developer or you're just getting started, having the right setup makes a huge difference in productivity and in development. Let's dive into it. So first, I just wanna introduce the MacBook Air M1. The MacBook Air M1 is a very powerful laptop and I've been using it for a while and I must say, it is truly, it says what it does, right? The performance is efficient and it is reliable when you wanna get something done like rendering or you want to export a video or you you are coding something in particular and you wanted to compile the code the macbook air m1 does it really fast and i mean fast and would it be a suggestion would it be a suggestion for you to get this m1 macbook air i would say most definitely i would say yes just because of my personal experience with this very powerful laptop as a developer and designer all i can say is is that this machine's been a game changer for me when i am designing when i am prototyping when i'm designing like an app or a website design it is very powerful you know when it comes to exporting or rendering or uploading or even editing a video such as this one this is what i edited on the macbook air m1 is a lightweight laptop and has incredible battery life with the new m1 chip it handles all my development it handles all my development tasks effortlessly from running multiple ides to managing virtual machines the fanless design keeps it silent and the retina display is perfect for long coding sessions now let's dive into the essential software i use as a developer these are the tools that i use daily as a solopreneur so this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go through all the apps first okay so right okay so right away we can see here i've got brave now so brave is just another browser which i use i prefer it. it's a lot more efficient and you know it doesn't always crash and i think it's you know it provides a lot of features but i mean the cool thing about brave it automatically has an ad blocker built into it and it hides your digital footprints essentially i have firefox for testing my web applications or just anything to do with website related stuff. I use Firefox for other things like where I watch like maybe, you know, YouTube videos or movies or when I'm doing uh, in-depth research, you know, it's my kind of my research browser tab where I have separate uh, bookmarks and, you know, other business related stuff, solopreneur stuff, other apps. I've got Notion for note taking and, you know, I use Notion for when I plan my videos. I use Notion for doing things like to-dos, like planning out my day, my week, my month, my year, the, the whole year I plan. You know, the, the cool thing about Notion is that you can, it has AI integration, right? So you can do slash and then you can automatically write out what you want to do for the week and then write out your whole entire goal for the year and elaborate on it and AI will go ahead and write it out. And I think Notion is just a really cool tool. It's an intuitive tool to track your progress and plan your, your day and plan any sort of event. And I think it's a huge productivity bonus for using this app and I would re recommend it. And in fact, the the apps and the tools which I'll, I'll leave it in the description below for you to look at i've also got notion calendar because they can provide it actually connects so you can actually look at notion calendar you can plan it and it gives you like this predicted timeline i don't know i think you know notion and notion calendar connect to each other and stuff like that it's also a tool which i use to plan out my day plan the week and the month ahead the year ahead so the the essential software which i use is vs code visual studio code is a text editor that allows you to write your code and to develop your product so i use visual studio code because i, I prefer i've tried out uh, sublime text the very first text editor that I used was Notepad++ and I decided to move on to something like Visual Studio Code because it provided a lot of features. And one of those features is obviously allowing you to install plugins, allowing you to install extensions to help you on your development process. And I think it's a lot effective, a lot more efficient when you use extensions that will help you write better code or spot errors early before you publish it and deploy it. And uh, this is what Visual Studio code offers and you can also write your own extension and publish it on the extension marketplace which is really cool the next thing that i actually have when i do my development the next thing i have is a thing called iterm i use iterm for basic necessities right 
accessing folders, you know, running development projects. And it, it allows me to you know, use this effectively because I can see what's going on within my project folders and my documents. And, um, you know, it, it's very cool to have this tool. I, ha I use iTerm too because it provides a very powerful terminal experience. It offers split panels. You can cut, have your own customized profiles of what the terminal can look like. And overall, it just has excellent performance. Like, let me show you. Look, I can do split panel vertically like that. And I can have two different environments where I can be in a different directory, a different folder and work on a, a different development project if I really want to write code within the terminal using Nano or Vim. You can do it in, within here, right? Which is very, uh, it is also very intuitive and it's fast when you want to access certain projects and folders, right? So this is why I use this. Like, so for example, I access my portfolio website uh, right away. I can access it and right away I can just, you know, run the project and then it will go ahead and run the project within my terminal, which is really cool. So anyways, so I have item two and that's what I use. The next one, which I do have installed is Homebrew. Now, what is Homebrew? Homebrew is a package manager for Mac OS. It makes installing software easy on Mac. So you don't have to go on your browser and, and search up what you want to install and click download and, and run the installer. You just simply open up your terminal and you do this. You just go like brew install package name. And then once you do that, done. Brew install Brave. And then it'll go ahead and install the Brave browser or something like that, right? You can also do search. So like brew search, uh, let's say VS code. So I'm just going to run that and see if it... Yeah, there we go. So so right away, we've got Visual Studio Code. I already have it installed, but all you, you would do is select the package name, copy it. And if you're on Mac, you can just do brew install via Visual Studio Code, run it, and then it will go ahead and install the package and it will install that software. And then now you have Visual Studio Code on your Mac, which is really cool. But I don't need to do that because I've already installed it. Anyways, the next app that I use for my development is a thing called Insomnia. Now, Insomnia is a one of my favorite tools actually for API and so API development and testing. So Insomnia allows you to Okay, I haven't signed in. I don't know why this is showing up. As you can see, this is what uh, Insomnia looks like. So that was my essential software I use for development. Now let's get into productivity. For designing, I use a thing called Figma. Now Figma is a uh, design tool. You can design, you know, apps or websites or whatever you want to design in here. Figma has it for you. You can even design pitch decks, presentations. Figma has all of that. I use Figma because it's quick and easy and it's intuitive. And there's other, there's a th uh, Figma community where you can look at other people's projects and work and get some inspiration. And also there's templates, which is very helpful. And so that's why I use Figma. It's quick, it's easy, and it's efficient. For my desktop organization, as you can clearly see on my back, Background. everything's clean I don't show my folders on my desktop because it looks messy and I just don't like having folders on my desktop I rather access it uh, using the finder or using the terminal it provides a bit of productivity for my VS code theme I just use the default Visual Studio code theme because I'm not a big fan of using changing Visual Studio uh, VS code themes at all and that's my MacBook Air M1 as a software engineer I hope you found something useful in this video if you enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe for more content like this more videos like this will be posted on this youtube account if you want to see more content of entrepreneurship and tech don't forget to subscribe because this is what this youtube channel is about let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if there's a topic you would like me to cover next and also let me know what software you use do you use visual studio code or sublime text thanks for watching this video and i'll see you in the next